Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. For a hook, you want a jigged hook, like these risen barbless in size 10. And you will want a gold or black slotted tungsten bead in the four millimeter size. However, I'm out of Risen's four millimeter beads, so I will have to settle with these 3.8 millimeter beads from Allen, which are close enough in size. Place the bead on your hand and put the hook through the bead to easily get it on the hook. Once you have the bead properly on your hook, place your hook securely in your vise. Now we want some .015 size lead wire. Make 10 or so wraps with the lead wire onto the hook shank and make sure that you push them together so there is no spaces and it is wrapped cleanly. For thread, I really like this Vivas 6 aught in brown. It's strong thread, but also thin enough not to bulk up the fly too much. Start your thread right behind the lead wraps and break or snip off the tag end. Then make loose wraps up the wire and back down to hold it in place. Now you can make tighter wraps up and down the hook shank until the lead is mostly covered and you have smoothed out the shank. Now clip a single strand of gold crystal flash from the hank. Turn the fly upside down on your vise and tie the crystal flash in in the center of the piece on top of the hook, like so. Then split the flash to either side of the hook and tie it down back to the bend of the hook. I like to then snip this off to about triple the hook shank length to get it out of the way for the next steps. Now we need some dubbing, and I like this flashy diamond dub in bright orange. Dub a rather thick noodle onto your thread and then make a dubbing ball right behind the bend of the hook. This does not have to be dubbed on super tight or perfectly. In fact, we want some bugginess out of it. So I like to pick out some of the dubbing to make it fray a bit more. Now for some rubber legs. And at this size of fly, these nymph silly legs work perfectly. And I like the orange barred color. Pull one leg off and cut it in half to save it for another fly. Attach this to your fly in the same way as a crystal flash, on both sides of the hook. However, you want to tie this up tight against the dubbing ball, like so, in order to flare the legs out a bit more. As you can see, they're almost sticking out perpendicular to the hook shank. Now we need some soft tackle, and also some chickaboo in reddish brown color. You can get a soft tackle with chickaboo pelt from whiting like this, which will work great. Or you can get a chickaboo patch with a soft tackle pelt like these two. Obviously, you'll want a different color soft tackle for this fly. You will need two chickaboo feathers, preferably ones that are straight with good tips. And also two small sized soft tackle. To prepare the chickaboo feathers, you'll want to strip off the bottom feathers that aren't extending out to the tip. You can see how these splay out in one direction, so keep this angle in mind when tying in. Also, I find that if I wet the hackle first, it's easier to tie these in. Tie one chickaboo feather in on the side of your fly with it splayed outward. Also, try and have it angled upward as well and sticking out about one and a half times the hook shank length past the bend of the hook. If you tie down the stem one direction and fold it rearward and tie it down the other direction, and then put pressure on your thread, you can simply snap off the stem like so. Tie the other chickaboo feather in on the other side of the fly in the same manner. Sometimes breaking off the tag end doesn't work as well, but scissors work just fine. Tie the feathers down close to the dubbing ball in the same way that we tied the silly legs to make them splay outward. Then clean up the shank and make it about as even and smooth as possible. At this point, I cut the silly legs to length in between the length of the feathers and the crystal flash antenna. Now we need some scud back, and I like a dark brown color, like this dark tan color from Fly Tires Dungeon, which I don't have that color in the scud back from Wopsy. Bring your thread up to about the bead, and then tie the scud back down on top of the fly with the hook point facing up. Now this stuff can be tricky to tie down, and if you just hold it angled rearward the best as possible and tie down onto it, you can bring it all the way back to the start of the feather claws without it bunching up much. Now we need to prepare the soft tackle. Take a look at your feathers and select the feather with the most amount of soft tackle on it. 
Let's strip off any of the fluffy feathers of the first feather here. And you will be left with something like this. Now for the second feather. You'll want to leave some of that fluff, but only a couple pieces of it. Strip off the rest, like so. Now on the first feather. Pinch just the tip of the feather and then stroke down the fibers like so, leaving yourself a tie-in spot at the tip. Tie this down with the angle of the feather facing outward. Trust me, it's the best way. Also, don't tie down all the way to the feathers that are stroked downward. Leave a small space like so. Now, with some hackle pliers, grab the stem of the feather and proceed to make touching wraps with your hackle up the hook, stroking all the fibers rearward with every wrap. Capture the stem and trim off the waist. Then do the same thing with the second feather. However, you will want to clip off the tip just a little bit to tie it in. Also tie up onto the first feather slightly to angle the fibers rearward more. Wrap your feather onto the hook in the same way that you did the first feather, stroking all the fibers rearward. Capture the stem and trim off the waist. Then pull your scud back towards the eye of the hook and make sure and stroke all the feather fibers rearward and downward. Capture the scud back and then check to make sure it's even on top of the hook shank, like so. Then tie it down super tight so it won't come loose and trim off the waist. Now you can whip finish your fly and add some head cement all around the whip finish to ensure its durability. And there we have it, a crayfish type pattern that is super small and still has lots of movement. It can be fished like a nymph, but also like a normal crayfish pattern. It is quite versatile. So I hope you liked today's video. I'm sure all of you noticed that I use some very good quality materials from Risen. What you might not know is that these hooks are very good priced. And also I was able to get you an even better deal on them and everything else in the Risen shop. Go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for your discount. All this info and links to their items will be in the description section of this video. Also, go and check out my merchandise. I have hats, shirts, phone cases, and more, all with my awesome logo on them. This helps support my channel and also gets you some awesome gear. Links to my merchandise will be in the description section of this video as well. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys go catch some fish.